I'm now being joined on the news by a security consultant, Femi Aratokwale. Thank you so much for joining us on the news. Um, thank you for having me. And a good pleasure. Afternoon. A pleasure. Thank you. Now, uh, Femi, the Kaduna train bound for Abuja was attacked on March 28. And ha it has been 69 days and it still seems the government is not heading to or heading to the call of the victims' families. Now, do you share this view or what do you think about this? Um, it's, it's a tragedy. Um, it's, it, you see, um, let me put it this way. It's so sad that today we can be talking about the issue of um, Abuja trained um, kidnap and um, robbery and criminal activities, as so to say. But let's look at it this way. I'm not going to blame the government, neither am I going to blame the parents, but I'm just going to blame the system we have in our political terrain that is not addressing issues accordingly. And this is where we have the fault. However, the parents, the family members, they've got their rights to voice out to even sue the government, to even sue the real corporation for even failing to even address all this issue from the start on. But again, what we concentrate on right now seems to have been defeated what we should be doing, which is releasing and securing the lives of all those people who have, have been abducted. But we're not facing that, rather we're just facing political games as in who becomes the president, who becomes the governor and who becomes what have we in Nigeria today? So we are not really serious in terms of tackling this insecurity heads on, rather our body language is saying something different globally and everybody see that. And it's gonna affect us when it comes to business and investment, especially around Abuja, Kaduna and the Northern area. Because right now, if security is a problem in Nigeria, how do we expect investors to come? If security is the problem in Nigeria, how do we have more multiple rail interlink to give us a very good transportation that we need in Nigeria? So again, we need to look into it and we're not even saying anything about it. And it's sad in Nigeria history today. Mm. Thank you so much for me for your perspective on that. Now, this happened over two months ago. Why do you think there is an awkward silence from the government? Because a lot of people have come out protesting and crying for help. People are still kidnapped. People are still held hostage. And what do you think is the reason why, why the government is still very silent regarding this issue? I will say this from my own understanding. And based on the fact that I've always been in Nigeria to discuss security issues, not only with private bodies or corporate bodies, I've actually been discussing these kind of issues as well with um, police officers, military and civil defense as well, even some other you know, um, school security students as well. The problem is this, we do not have the concept about how do we readdress or restructure the security challenges we have in Africa or the challenges we have in Nigeria. Rather, we're pounding the whole pressure on only the police and the military, whereby we need to look into how do we synergize again or how do we look for another taxes we need to use because we have 1,001 million taxes that can be used. But again, we're not adopting all this. I have equally, you know, been in consultancy with the government that let us do things in a different approach so that at least we're going to mitigate and, you know, discourage these activities. But the, la the body language, again, is not saying anything interesting. Rather, I would say this way, we have some people within the government or perhaps we have some big players out there that are cashing in and gaining in from all these problem we're facing in Nigeria in terms of insecurity we have today, because a lot of people see insecurity and the idea of, you know, kidnap as a lucrative business in Nigeria, instead of us discouraging it, we are equally encouraging it the more. Mm, it really is a sad situation what's going on out there. Now, Femi, 69 days later, and you see people living in fear and assumptions, especially the relatives of the kidnapped victims. What do you think can be done to allay these fears and assumptions? Um, well, the first thing we need to look into is this. What is the mental state of the family members? Even those that have been rescued or those that are alive or those that have sustained some injuries or the other, 69 days. Have we actually learned anything from them? Have we called them to even, let's, let's hear the kind of stories they want to tell us. What can we learn from them? Again, the, 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 the concept and the ideas behind this Abuja train track is a very good one. We cannot rely only on our roads. Again, we need to rely on air and rails. But what do we learn from all this? It is happening and I can tell you 
for my own understanding, it might probably happen again because we're still not seeing anything. 69 days is not just a joke. It's not a one day issue. It's still going on and on. And we have different people in different regions who have been in, you know, in captivity one way or the other. Exactly when we talk about the government, what is the governor of the Kaduna State even saying? Has he come out to say anything at all? As, do we have any regional security planning into how do we tackle this? This is what we need to do. Let's have a blueprint map and let's see how it's gonna help. Let's have a pilot scheme and see if it's gonna work. Now we want to reopen back the rail system, especially this Abuja Kaduna. Are people gonna be safe in applying all these rules? We're not planning well and we're not discussing a very good long-standing safe haven to all this. So we still don't know what is gonna happen. 69 days is still counting. How long is that gonna go for? What is the situation of those people over there? Again, we need to look into the communication system. What is the media saying? What is the network provider saying? Do we have any of this information at all that we can actually put out there and see if it's gonna help? We're not saying anything. So 69 days still counting and we keep on counting and it's gonna go on and on till we see a very good result or perhaps we see a good government that is ready to tackle this heads on. Instead yes, for me, I, I, I like yeah, that I you brought up the issue of the safety of the people because I was going to say, let's look at a vantage point, right? Beyond the fears of the relatives of these people, everyone is scared of traveling by road. And now they want to open the rail yeah. system. Even traveling with your cars, your vehicles is also not safe, especially to the northern part. So is there anything that can be done, especially by the government, to you know allay these fears, not just the fears of people related to those who have been kidnapped now, but the fears of everyone in Nigeria? Because going by road is, is something that people now dread. Um, thank you so much for this question. Um, I think we keep missing one key part. When we talk about this road travel and issues going on in Nigeria, the question I want to ask is this. Have we actually called a stakeholder meeting to now involve the National Union of Road Transport Workers into all this insecurity we have? Because if we look at a polluted data, we will understand that most of all these activities are happening on our roads. Again, the question is this, who are the big players within the road transport workers that we need to call in and call the clerics, the religious leaders, so we have them. And again, we need to call everybody that we think might be a player in all these cases and see how we can understand and work things better. We cannot just leave it only for the police officers or the military. The National Union Road Transport Workers are a key part that we need to call in because they understand the road. They apply the road. They know the hotspots and they know where things can be defeated. If we don't call them in and make them understand that, look, this is a fight for everyone, then we will definitely lose the battle. That is my own opinion. Thank you so much, Femi, for sharing your opinion, especially on the security challenges facing Nigeria. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.